Docker is a tool that's used to run containerized applications. In this video, I'll show you how to pass arguments to your Docker containers at runtime. If Docker is new to you, then I've got a quick introduction before we get to the hands-on portion of this video. I'm Alex, and here on Zazen Codes, I teach full stack data science. Docker is an extremely useful tool for containerizing and deploying your machine learning models. And even if you never end up using Docker itself, the concept of containerized applications is extremely important. And in the context of machine learning and data science, think about it this way. You need to be able to reproduce how you trained your model or how you make predictions with your model. By the way, I'm publishing video walkthroughs of my notes over on Patreon. And I've just put up an hour long audio video walkthrough of my slides on fundamentals of data engineering, which is a fantastic book for introducing you to data engineering concepts. So if you're serious about learning full stack data science, then I think you'll find that extremely valuable. And you can also sign up for free to my email list to get access to my Notion Second Brain Notes repository. This is where I keep all of my programming notes and I update it all the time. And I only send one email a week when I post a new video. Let's get to the content today. Docker lets you create application images. These are the operating system, library dependencies, code, and configuration all wrapped up in a package. And when these packages are run, they're called containers. So containers are runtime instances of images in Docker language. And this is all done through the Docker engine. On Mac OS, I have a Docker desktop application, but regardless of your operating system, you'll be able to find instructions for installing Docker on the Docker website. And this is really comprehensive for all of the major operating systems. I like to think of the desktop application as like a nice to have visual interface, but the whole idea with Docker is that you can develop on your local computer and then run code in the exact same environment on a server somewhere. And on that server, you typically wouldn't have access to a graphic user interface like you do on your computer. So being able to run all of this Docker stuff in the command line is really important. And we'll be using the command line today to run our examples. So what's the point of Docker runtime arguments? Configuration can easily be hard coded into your Docker images. This can be done by writing, say, global variables in your code, or in your Docker file setting environment variables. This isn't what we're talking about today. Here we're talking about how you can dynamically set arguments when you run your Docker images. In other words, how you can use command line arguments to set configuration options when you run your Docker container from an image. So what is my use case? In this video, I have a Python application which takes configuration options that set something called the client ID. I work in an agency as a data engineer, so I often think in terms of having a system that works for multiple clients, people who pay us money to do things for them. And so that's the use case here. In the context of machine learning, a use case could be that you have many different models and your models are designed for different countries. And so you could pass country as an argument to your application. I'd like to create a video about containerizing a machine learning model in that way. So if that sounds interesting to you, let me know in the comments below or check out the video description. And if I've already made it, I'll link it in there. Let's get to the hands-on portion of today's video. I have some code, which I'll post on GitHub and link in the description below. And inside of here, you're gonna find five folders. I'll start by showing you what our base application looks like. And then we're gonna start running this using Docker. So I'll go into that folder and I'm gonna open it up in Vim so that we can explore it. I just have a bare bones application. I have this core file. We're gonna just print hello from my app and then I'm gonna print the config argument that we're passing to this. So we have a main function that's taking some argument. In my main file, what I'm doing is I'm importing sys as well as my main function from that core file. And then I'm just printing the first argument to our file at runtime using, using sys argv. So now using tmux, I'm gonna open up a new pane down here. I should get my key maps up here. Okay, so in here, I'm gonna go into my base application and I wanna run this code. And how I do that is I can say python-m my application. This is gonna look for the main file in my app folder. And now I'm gonna be passing an argument to that, which I'm gonna call client one. So now it prints hello from myapp.core using config for client one. And you can see that that's just running the code in here. I'll show you one more thing to kind of pull this together a little bit more. Let's look at this config folder. Here's where we might wanna put configuration for different clients. 
And let's show an example of that. I'm gonna expand this and open up client one. Uh, configuration option we could do would be client name. And I'll say my client number uh, one. Let's say we wanna load that now, right? To our application at runtime. Well, in here, I could, I could load that. Um, this is pretty hacky, just to pull it together to show you what, how this might work. Um, I could check my config arg down here and I could say if config arg equals client one, then I'm gonna say from config dot client one import client name, let's say else and I'll raise value error and we'll put it in here, it's called config arg. All right, uh, down here I'll just say print client name like that. Let's see if we can run this. We'll go back to our Tmux, come down here, and if everything's working well, I should be able to run this, and now there. So it's printing as the third line, my client number one, uh, which is this final line in our code. All right, let's start using Docker, and let's go into our second example. This is our build configs example. Here, if I again go into Vim, now we have some Docker files that are actually populated with code. Let's walk through this. Here's a Docker file for our client number one. And we're saying from Python 3.8 slim. So we're gonna be running an operating system that has Python 3.8 installed on it. We're gonna go into this app directory. This creates the directory and goes into it inside of our containerized environment. Then we're gonna copy all of the code from my machine from this folder here into the, the um, containerized application. And then we're gonna be running this command. So python-m my app client one. This is exactly what I ran before in the terminal, but now we're telling the Docker container to run this when it starts. Aside from that, my application remains the same. I still have these empty configuration files. So let's give this a shot. At this point, we're gonna start using Docker. So you need to make sure Docker is running on your system. If I type Docker version, I have version 24. And if I type something like Docker image ls, I can see what images I have. I could do the same thing for containers. And I could also Docker container like this. And I could also do Docker ps to show what things I have running right now. So we're gonna build this application. I'm gonna say Docker build to my app client one and I'm gonna build from our current folder and I'm gonna specifically source this Docker file for client number one. So that tells Docker, hey, don't just look for a file named Docker file, but look for the file called dockerfile.client1 because I specifically wanna build that Docker file. So now if I do a Docker image ls, I can see that that's been built and I can run that. So I can say Docker run and I'm gonna make sure to pass dash dash rm to just like remove it after it runs and I'm gonna say client dash one like this. At this point, if I was to try to run client two, it doesn't know what that is, but of course what I could do is let's hop back up here and I have a Docker file for client two. Um, I should probably change that to a two. And so now what I could do is if I go back to where I built it, I could build that separately. There we go. Um, and then I could run that separately, which this should work. Now I don't love this approach because it doesn't scale well. For each new configuration, you need to create a brand new Docker image. If I say Docker image ls, there's two images here and these each have a size of 152 megabytes. So there's better ways of doing this and let's talk about that now. The first one I wanna talk about is runtime arguments using command. We'll go into my third folder and let's see what we have going on here. Now my Docker file is a bit different. I no longer have a command at the bottom. I'm doing the other three lines the same, but I'm not running anything. So if I was to go and build this, we're gonna see that nothing actually is gonna happen. Docker build my command app. So if I do docker image ls, I can see that my CMD app at the, at the bottom here. Now let's run this. I'm gonna say docker run rm my CMD app and that's it. Nothing seems to have happened here. This is because there's no command in my Docker file. So what I can do is pass a command at runtime. So I'm gonna say docker run rm my cmd app, and here I'm gonna say python dash m, and I'm gonna say my app and client one. Now when I run it, it says the message that we keep seeing. And that's because what it's doing here is it's going into the image, like into my containerized environment, 
and it's executing that Python command, which is then running this code here. So this approach might work well for a really simple application, but I'd still prefer if the command would still explicitly exist in my Docker file. And instead what I could do is use an entry point strategy to do something similar to this. I'll show you that now. I'm gonna go into my fourth folder and inside of here, my Docker file looks a little different. All of the rest of the code is the same, but now I have an entry point and I'm explicitly setting a command called no config specified. And in my entry point, I'm telling the application run this when I run the image. Let's build this guy. If I list my images, I can see this, my entry point app, and now I'll run this. If I don't pass anything, it says using config for no config specified. So this is effectively my default configuration. If I change this to client one, then what I'd have to do down here is rebuild everything. And now when I run it, it's saying using config for client one. What I could also then do is just say the same thing, but now docker run and pass client two as my argument. One thing I'll show is if I don't say rm and just run this, it does the same thing, but now it doesn't clean up that container. So when I type docker container ls uh, dash a, we can see that that still exists uh, on my system. So if I go to my Docker desktop app, inside of my containers, I can see it here. And it, I can see the output from when I ran this. But what I can do is go and inspect it. And if I look at this args here, I can look at the arguments being, being passed in here. I can also look at command. And it says the command being run is client2, which is exactly the command that I passed when I ran it here in my terminal. So depending on what your application is like, this might be a great setup for you. But I've got an even better method, or at least a method that I like even better. And this is the last one I'll show you. And it's runtime arguments using environment variables. So again, I'm gonna get out of all this stuff. I'm gonna go into my final folder and I'll show you this. I'm setting an environment variable called my app config. And here the default environment variable is no config specified, just like the last example. And then in my command, I'm running that Python dash M my app. I've also made some changes to my Python code. If I open up my main.py, it looks similar, but now I don't have any sys or argv stuff going on. I'm just running the code in my main file. So this is already like cleaner, right? And in this main file, well, it's a main function in my core file, I'll open that up. And here's where I'm doing my argument handling stuff. I'm importing OS and I'm getting the environment variable my app config. So the messages we're gonna be seeing from the Docker terminal side of things will be the same, but the way it's working internally with Python is different. So now let's open up our terminal and let's get going on building this thing. I'm gonna call it my end app and I'll just build this Docker file here. I'll say Docker image LS like we've been doing. You can see it there, my end app. And then I can also say docker container ls. And if I do that, we can see my entry point app is running. And what I actually wanna do is clean all of this stuff up because I don't want this getting in our way. So I'm gonna remove that container and then I'm gonna grab all of these images that we've been working with. I'm gonna delete all of those. Um, so now if I run these commands, I actually, I'm not gonna see anything and I'm gonna to have to rebuild this. So I'll find it and rebuild it. Cool, now we're in business and you can see it right here, my env app. You can see how this was done. Um, this Docker desktop app is, is wicked. Now let's run this thing. I'll say docker run my end app like this, and it's using config for no config specified. So now I'll run this and override this environment variable. I'll say docker run rm, and I'll say dash e, and my app config equals client one, and then I'll say my end app and run that. And now it's working exactly like we want it to. This strategy also works well with Docker Compose. Here's a Docker Compose file where I'm just building the image in this current file. And so let's run everything we just saw using Docker Compose. So first I wanna clean up what I have here. So I'm gonna say Docker image rm my end app. Get rid of that. So now what I'm gonna do is say Docker Compose build and it's gonna look for a Docker Compose file and build that. 
And now if I look at my Docker images, and it's built it using my Docker Compose file. So now I can run this using Docker Compose up. I'll go ahead and run our app, and you can see some output here. Uh, in this case, it's printing the name of our service on the left-hand side next to the output. And this is because typically a Docker Compose file would have multiple services that are all running together. And when you say Docker Compose up, they all spin up. If I go to my Docker container and list all of these, I can see this running as a Docker container. So now what I would say is Docker Compose down. And now when I list my Docker containers, it's no longer running. So how do we do arguments with Docker Compose? Well, up here, I have a service called my app. And you, another way of using Docker Compose is you say Docker Compose run and then the name of your application. So here I've done that and it just ran my app. And using this Docker Compose run, and what I'll say here is my app config equals, and I'll say client two here, and then I'll pass my app, and now it'll run that, and it'll say using config for client two. This is how we would do things with Docker Compose. And if I hop over here, let's see if we can see any of this. I can look at my container. This was just run nine seconds ago here. And if I inspect this, and I go to the environment section, I can see how I'm setting this environment variable along with some other environment variables that are automatically set. So that's it. What's your favorite way of passing runtime arguments to Docker? And where do you think that you'll use this or where have you used this in the past in your programs? If you like this video, I'd appreciate it if you give me a like and consider subscribing. This helps me reach more people on YouTube. If you wanna continue learning about Docker in the context of machine learning, then I'll post a good follow-up video to this one on the screen that you can click on. Thank you for spending some time with me today. Namaste.